Hello! Today I'll be teaching you how to make Damp Track Tales. This is a really fun topic, I feel like, and I love Damp Track. And so, this will be teaching you how to do this, basically. And it'll include FK along with it. And I like to use a driver setup so I can do t uh, tail physics to change the amount of influence on the Damp Track. And I'll be teaching you how to do this in tutorials, so I hope you look forward to it. Alright, so the first thing that we want to do is we actually want to create a tail object. And this one's a very basic one that I made here. And so then, on top of that, I add the subdivision surface and then shade it smooth. And then right after that, we want to add a mesh circle. And this will be our controller bone that we'll add as a custom object later on. So then we want to add a skin modifier to it. And then we got to change the size. So we go into edit mode, press A to select all, and then control A to scale the skin. And then I like it on smooth, so you just check shade smooth over here. Now to get to the armature, we can press shift A to add one in. And then armature, single button. Go over here to the running man, and then change it to in front. And then now that we have it in front, we can go to the side, turn it to x-ray mode already by pressing alt Z and then go into edit mode by pressing tap. Now select the whole bone, RX90. And then we want to name this really fast. So you press F2 on the keyboard to get this little naming section. And I'll name mine tail.001. And this 001 will help us increment the numbers so then we don't have to do it. So then we can extrude this along the Y axis just one time here. And then once you've done that, if you press Shift R, you can do it until it's a little bit past the tail. Or you can do one more past the tail. And then this last one won't be a deforming bone, so it won't be affecting the actual mesh. So this one's a spare bone, basically. Now that we've done that, we can select this first bone, press Control L, Shift D to duplicate it. And then we want to press Alt-P to clear the parent, which will make them all separate bones. And then you want to press Control-L again. And then once you've done that, you want to press the period key on your keyboard to and turn this to individual origins. And you basically just click on it. And then we can scale, and turning it to individual origins lets you scale each of them individually. So then we want to scale it to about halfway. And then now that we've done this, we actually want to go into pose mode. So if you hit control and then tab, you get this little what or uh, little menu. Go to pose mode. And when you go into pose mode, don't click anything yet. You want to go over to the bone right here, and we'll change the object. So you see how we have circle right here? This is the one that we made earlier. And it will actually change that bone to the same shape that we have over here, which is really, really nice. And what we can do with that is we can rotate it, so you can kind of just move it around and see which one's actually affecting it. And since it's the X, we can set that one to 90, and it'd go in the same direction as all of the other bones. Now to continue this to all of the bones, we, while we have them selected, we can actually just copy to selected by right-clicking. And then that'll uh, copy any of the values that we have. And for this one, we can do copy all the selected, and then now we have it set to every single bone. And now that we've done that, if we go back into edit mode really fast, we want to delete this last bone. We won't be using this one, so we don't need the small one. So we just delete that. And we want to do a parenting setup here. So we click the small bone, and then the bone behind it, and you can press Control p and keep offset. Make sure you don't click connected, otherwise you may have issues later down the line. And then just continue that down the row. Now for this last one, it's a little bit different. So what we're actually going to do, since it doesn't have a bone behind it, is we're going to parent this one to this one. So we're going to parent the big one to the small one, basically, in this case. And we'll still do the keep offset. Now that we've done that, we can actually go back to post mode. We're done with all of our edit mode, for the most part. So now that we've done that, this beginning bone will rotate all of them, but these ones will not rotate them. 
But now that we've done that, we can now do a fun shortcut for adding constraints. So if you select this one first, and then select this one, and press Control shift c we can do a damp track modifier. This is what causes most of the effect that we want for the tail. So we put that one on, and then you basically continually do that all the way down. So you select the bone in front, and then the bone in behind. And then you go Control shift c damp track. And this sets up all of the damp track for you, so then you don't have to do it. So just continue that down the line. Alright, so now that we've done that, select the first bone and press Control L. We'll want to change the influence and make sure that this is working ahead of time. So change this to something like 0.5 and then hit enter and right click on it and copy to selected like we did earlier with the shapes. And now that we've done that, all of these damp tracks should have the same influence value. And to test this, we can grab this first circle and then just see if it's working. And so, right there, now we have this one, and the next part that we gotta add is the FK. The FK is a, um, a really fun part of it. Now, you can do this by default with Damp Track, however, it has a slight delay to it in some cases, so it's a lot nicer to have a separate bone do it, so then it doesn't have a delay. Because this one won't have any Damp Track on it, so it'll be exactly where you want it, and no delay, basically. Easy peasy. Alright, so to set that part up, you basically now select this bone right here, shift select that bone, and control shift C, and this time we'll do a copy rotation. And then just do that one all the way down the line really fast. And then for this last bone, we actually do not need to add a copy rotation, since it's doing the same thing that a copy rotation would do, which is essentially this right here. Now, as you notice, it actually causes a really weird effect. But this is because we have our uh, damp track before the copy rotation, which causes this really weird effect. Now to fix this, we just simply drag it beforehand on all of these really fast. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is select this bone right here, Control L to select all of them, and now we want to change target space to local. And then just copy to select it on both of those. And then now once we've done that, all these copy rotations are set up nice and easy. Now, the reason why we set this extra bone on the end that doesn't have any constraints is so that way this one can have a damp track. So the last bone in the chain will always be a stiff, so it will always match the same direction, meaning that it won't have any damp track applied. So in some points, it would make it look really awkward, so I just like to set it up like this, then everything has damp track that's going to have it. So now we need to get rid of all the deforming, like the bones that aren't going to be deforming anything. So select all of those. So you can just shift select all these circles and that end tip because the tip won't do anything. And then you can click uncheck the deform and then we can again right click on that copy to select it and now they all don't have the deform on them. Alright, so now that we've set this up, the next thing that we could do is we could actually set up automatic weight painting to our tailbone. So if we go into object mode by pressing control tab, we can now go over to the modifier and if you have a subdivision surface, you want to apply this before you go to do weight painting, otherwise it won't work in the long run. So now we can select the mesh and then select the armature and press control P and then do with automatic weights. And now it's actually completely set up to, to mess around with when you go into post mode. So now when we're in post mode, you can see that you get that really awesome effect right here. However, we want this to be even more customizable. So you could leave it off right here. However, the values in here would be a lot more fun if we could change them really easily. So we can add a drive to them. So if you go back into edit mode, we just want to add a root bone, basically. A bone that we can put all of our properties and settings to. So if you just drag this off to the side, it has nothing to do with this setup right here. And just name it something like root bone. And then now that you've named it root bone, you can just go straight back to post mode. And click the green bone over here. 
and uncheck deform. Now, if you go down all the way down to the bottom, you'll see this property. It's most likely like this, really hard to see in some cases. So then drop that down, click new, and then click on the setting button next to it. It's that little icon and name it tail physics. And then once you've named it tail physics, change the default value to whatever you'd want maybe the default to be. I typically like 0.7 to 0.6 sort of thing. And this is just a value. So if we click OK right here, if you click right click on it and you go to reset to default, that will change it to your default value that you just created. So now what we want to do is right click on it and you see where it says copy as new driver right above open or online manual. Just click that really fast. And then go back to your green bones that have the, uh, the constraints on them in the damn track and just paste driver on them. And then that will automatically set up a driver for you and then just paste it all the way back. All right, and as the last thing that we want to do here is we get this issue where uh, if we press play, it doesn't reset or anything. So all we have to do is on any of these bones is just add a keyframe. So if we go to frame zero, insert something like scale, it'll actually automatically reset whenever you hit play. So as long as there's a single keyframe on this, everything will work really, really well. And you can actually mess with this life. So if you drag it around, you can see it moving without you having to move it every frame to get it to do it. So then you can have a really uh, fun tail. And then what this does now is this will change your values. The higher you go, the less friction you'll have. So if we go on here now, it's a lot slower and more like uh, slug-like maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have really good reference for that, but uh, basically, the higher you turn it, the faster it try to go back to its original position. Let's get a fast wag or something. But yeah, this is very fun. And if you want to hide these, you can just click Control L right there, and then we can add them into their own bone group. So we can go into uh, the Running Man and into Bone Collections right here. And if we go into the plus sign, we can create Deforming Bone. And rename this first one to Control Bones. And now that we've done that, we can actually click on Deforming Bones and assign these to Deforming and remove them from Control. Now you can tell if you've removed them by this dot. So if the ones that you've selected have a dot on there, that's those are the ones that you have them in. So now, if we hide this, we can only see our controlling bones and we don't have to worry about the other ones, but we don't have to press like hiding them with H and such. So it makes it a lot simpler. You can set this to any of the bones that you want. All right, so now that we've finished this tutorial, you can drag it around from the base and wag it all around. You can change the, the value at which it is. And you can also use FK with these bones. So you can change whichever bone you want without affecting the previous. And each FK bone still keeps the damn track. So I hope you all enjoyed the tutorial. I'll be having some more tutorials coming out here soon. Enjoy for more.